Hey guys, Jake Abdenor here, 252 Marathoner and Kinesiologist, and today we are going to discuss three signs that it's time to get some new shoes. Ah, that's fresh. <sighs> these are my old shoes and they're disgusting, I apologize. And I say these are my old shoes because I just realized the other day that it was time to replace them. So, so the first sign you know it's time to replace your shoe are these permanent creases that are along the foam. Can you see those? Oh my God, these are so dirty. Oh my God. I'll clean the shelf off a little bit. So right here, these little, these little teeny tiny little lines. So here's one pair. These right here, it's another pair. Same shoe, different color. So you notice I'm pushing down. So the foam is supposed to bounce back after you push, but on old shoes like these, it doesn't. It stays compressed. Whereas on these shoes, these are brand new, sexy MF running shoes that just cannot wait. I cannot wait to get my feet in and inside so I can take them out. No creases. Pushing down. Old ones. See how much that compresses? I put the same amount of force, it still compresses. Okay, so why do the creases matter? Why does that compression matter? How a running shoe works, the shock absorption. I'll use physics to explain it in 10 seconds. Force equals mass times acceleration. The more responsive the cushioning is, the slower the acceleration is going downwards, thus the less force. Is that 10 seconds? Just some quick studies to back that up. Fatigue of the foam reduces heel strike cushioning and is a possible cause of running injuries. In another study, after about 500 miles, the shoes only retained about 70% of their initial shock absorption qualities. I'll link both of those sources below. Okay, so the first sign you see those creases on there, might be time to switch them out. Sign number two, you start to notice new pains in your leg, in your foot, little tiny muscles, little weird spots, even maybe on your knee or on your leg that weren't there before. Chances are if you've been doing the same training, the same volume, the same intensity, more or less, but you start to develop new injuries that it's the shoes that are to blame. So a few days ago I was running in these things and my arch started to feel sore and weird, which is like not normal. And I was like, oh, it's probably the shoes. And I checked Strava and sure enough, I put 500 miles into them. Which, by the way, can be a great way to track the longevity of your shoes. Just keep track of the miles you put on them. Generally, typically, between like 300 and 400 miles, you should think about replacing your shoes. But there's a lot of factors that go into that. There's shoe type, there's the manufacturer, there's how heavy the shoe is, there's how heavy the runner is, there's how much volume you're doing, there's what feels good to you. So there's a lot of factors, but generally between 300 and 400 miles, you should think about replacing your shoes. Same pressure here and here that that difference isn't good that goes into your legs the third sign is totally subjective it's how does it feel how does your stride feel do you feel like there's less pop less less pep in your step things are starting to feel a little weird your stride not feel as spry as it usually does that's something you're gonna have to pay attention to as you progress in your running um, I will say from my personal experience, I love getting new shoes and, and I would replace my shoes every 200 to 300 miles if I could. But unfortunately these shoes this size, for size 14, I literally cannot buy these in Taiwan. I have to order them from a parcel forwarding service and they ship them over here. So I have to be like super stingy with my shoes. So I, I hate putting 500 miles on a shoe. I know when it starts to feel bad, but there's not really much I can do. I will say that this is also one thing you should totally not neglect. Put good money into your shoes. It's pretty much the only piece of equipment you really need to run. You can run $5 shorts, um, but put good money into your shoes. So for me, if I replace my shoes every three or four months, I'm totally okay putting hundred bucks into a pair of shoes. They save my legs, my Achilles, my calves, my knees, whatever. I run like 80% of my mileage on asphalt and concrete. So I want good shoes. I want good shoes with a good reputation. I want a good manufacturer. Looking back at my running career, my running history, it's definitely been times where I've neglected my footwear, where I've gotten some weird goofy injuries so yeah, it sucks to spend that kind of money every few months, but I mean you are throwing your body into the ground on one leg There's got to be something protecting you there, and you know what I mean? And some people can get a lot more miles out of shoes You know, I've seen on running forums and stuff some people put like a thousand miles in a pair of shoes That's fine. I mean whatever works for you I mean if you're not getting any injuries and it feels great and you, your stride feels amazing and you're running quick and then why get a new pair? Okay, so to summarize, number one, creases in the shoe along the foam. Number two, weird overuse injuries starting to come up. And then three, you just feel like there's less pop and the shoe doesn't feel as responsive. One concrete way you can keep track of the shoe's life is to just count the mileage. So 250 to 500 miles, eh, start to think about it. Also, when your shoe's really dirty like this, it's too dirty, it covers up the color of the shoe. And everyone knows that the more obnoxious and bright the color of your shoe is, the faster you run. It's science. All right, that's all I got for shoes. I'm gonna go test out my new ones. See ya.